Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing part four to our beginner scripting series and today we're going to be talking about functions and events. So let's just go ahead and dive right on to, into these. These are super important, not going to want to miss a second of this video. Let's dive right on in. So what are functions? Functions are basically um, blocks of code that you can repeat over and over and it, it helps condense your code, it helps make it um, easier to read, easier to um, work with, and it's it's a lot, it's a lot of help. So um, let's just go ahead and disable, actually we don't need to disable the these scripts. Let's just create a new script inside of server script service and let's write out a function. So how do we write a function? Well we can start by saying function. So now the computer knows we're starting to write a function. Now let's just go ahead and name our function. I'm gonna call this I'm going to call this add numbers and you'll see why in a second but after you name the function you need two parentheses and then drop a line as you can see the script automatically created an end for us so basically everything between this function and the end is part of the function next we can just say print oh, print and let's just say one plus one so what happens if we run this well we can actually run it and open up the output, but you'll notice it doesn't print two. And the reason is because we never called the function. So this is something special with functions. By the way, I forgot to name the script. Let's go ahead and name it real quick. We can call it function script. And there's something special with functions where you have to name, I mean, call your functions. So they don't run automatically. They are blocks of code. They are stored right here. This whole thing is stored, but it doesn't know when to run because we never told it to. So what if we said wait five seconds and then we said add numbers. So if we write out add numbers and then two parentheses, what we're doing is we're saying, telling the script to wait five seconds and then we're telling it to jump up to add numbers and do whatever is inside of it. That's basically what we're saying. Uh, I hope that makes sense. So that's what we're ca that's what calling a function is. Basically telling the script, hey, go find the function, add numbers, and go run it. And also when you write a function, it always has to be above when you call it, okay? It just has to be above them in the script so that the, the script knows where to find the function. Now let's hit run. See, it's printed too. It's printed one plus one. Perfect, so we can hit stop. And now we're going to talk about parameters. So we can pass through parameters and functions. And don't worry if it doesn't make sense to you. I don't expect it to automatically. But basically what we can say is we can say inside a function add numbers, we can say number one, comma number two. Okay, and then down here where we call it, we can pass through two numbers. And these are basically variables, okay? And whatever we put inside of these parentheses, the, the function is going to store in these variables. So if we say 1, 5, number 1 is going to be the variable and it holds the number 1. Number 2 is going to hold 5, okay? So it goes in order and it creates a variable um, and stores them like that so we can uh, then change whatever we want add numbers three five three comma five and that'll set number one to three and number two to five and then we can just say print number one plus number two okay now let's hit run and as you can see it's printed eight so there are tons of things you can do you, you don't when you pass through parameters they don't have to be integers they can be whatever data type you want so we could pass through a string uh let's pass through a string uh let's just say uh is our number so we'll print number one and that's it and then let's change the name of number two to uh string Okay, because now this is a new thing that we're passing through. We're now in slot number two. Okay, so this is number one is slot number one of parameters, and that is three. And slot number two is string, which is our uh, string right here, is our number. So let's print. Whoops, my bad. Let's just print string. Okay, so it'll print our number, our number one, and then our string. So it should print three, and then is our number. So if we hit run, we see three is our number. So that is a really helpful thing that you can uh, use with functions. 
So yeah, just keep practicing. It's going to take time before you get the hang of it. But um, yeah, that is basically functions and parameters. Now let's talk about events because these are also going to be super vital um, in scripting. So we'll barely, we're, we're going to scratch the surface of it. We're not going to touch on all of the events. There are so many events, um, but we will start uh, learning about them. There are also a couple other things um, that with functions that we're not going to touch on today, which are disconnects and returns. We're not going to uh, look at those because we're not going to be using it in our series, but they are uh, important if you want to get a little more advanced with functions, so you can uh, search those up if you would like. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, below all this, let's create a new thing. We're going to talk about events. So events, um, we can use an event to connect to a function. I know that sounds kind of crazy. Um, basically, what I mean by that is an event is when something happens, okay? So when blank happens, we are going to do blank function, okay? So we have a couple things to fill there. And um, I'm going to actually uh, do something else. I'm going to insert a new part up here. And I'm going to drag it up with the move Okay, just drag it up a bit. There we go. Actually, I'm going to move it all the way over to the spawn. Um, ah, too far. Okay, now we're pretty close to the small spawn, and I can move it up a little bit. Make sure you hit anchored. And now we have this little part. Inside of this part, we'll name this part touched part. And let's enter a script inside of it. In this script, we're going to be using an event. So we can say script.parent. Remember, that is our touched part, This is the, which is this part. And we can say dot .touched. And as you can see, there's this little like lightning bolt symbol next to this touched. If you see this lightning bolt symbol, that means that it's an event. Okay, That's Roblox's symbol for an event. So we can say dot .touched. And then what we can do is, now, it, now that the script knows we are going to do something when this part gets touched, and we can say colon connect. So this is how we add a function. We have to, after the event, say colon connect. And then we can either connect to a function that we've already written, or we can connect to a brand new function. So I'm gonna show you both ways. First, we'll co connect to a brand new function. So we'll say connect function. And then we'll open these brackets, okay? And this is always ha how you have to do it if you're going to connect to a new function. It's kind of weird, but you do colon connect, uh, open parenthesis, function, open close parenthesis, okay? That's just how you have to format it. And let's drop a line. Now, remember how we talked about parameters? So some events have a built-in parameter, and you're not going to know all of them. You have to do some searching, but touched has a built-in parameter, and it's whatever touched it. So we can just say hit. So, as you can see, we now have this variable parameter called hit, and that is whatever touched the part. And we can just say print hit.name. So name is a property, right? So we can, we can print the name of whatever hit the part or touched the part. Let's go ahead and hit play, and I'm going to walk into this part. So I have this part over here, and I'm going to walk into it. As you can see, it said handle, and that's because my little flamingo bird touched it, and that's what that part is called. But as you can see, if we cl climb on it, we have all of these different parts that touched it. My left foot, right foot, right lower leg, upper leg, all of those different parts that touched it. And we are connecting to a brand new function every time we hit it, okay? Uh, we can also say print hit.parent.name inside of the script, and that will print the player's name because all of the different body parts are stored in this one model and it's your player's name so if we try this what you'll notice we can walk into this part all we want but it's going to print the same thing every time um and it's going to uh unless it's an accessory okay so that's the that's the uh the um difference because it could be touching an attachment i didn't think about that but basically if it touches one of your body parts except for an accessory like this flamingo or paintball mask it's going to print my username, right? So that is how we can do that. But what if we want to connect to a function we've already written? That is pretty easy to do. So what we're going to do is we'll just drop a few lines outside of this and we'll create a new function. We'll say function on a hit and then we'll say uh, have a parameter called hit and we'll drop a line. So this um, right here is a brand new function we've created with the parameter of hit. And we can just use the same code from earlier print hit.parent.name. Now what we can do is we can say script.parent 
And then that's the touch part. So dot touched colon connect function. Actually, I'm sorry. Instead of saying connect function, we are going to directly connect to this function we already have. So we can say colon connect on hit. Now, there's one problem with this, and that problem is that our script won't know what hit is because we haven't passed through that parameter. Remember how we had different parameters in our function script where we directly pass them in? Well, if you try and do that here and do something like this, they won't, the script doesn't know what to do because that's not the correct formatting. What you have to do is you have to say colon connect on hit comma and then pass through any variables or parameters. So we can say comma uh, hit. Now the issue with doing it this way is now we won't have the built-in parameters with this so that's why we can't use hit. Um, that's why sometimes you want to directly connect to a function. We could also say um, connect function hit and write the same thing up here that we did and then what we would do is say on hit hit and then we could still print this but that's kind of a lot of unnecessary lines um i would just end up doing this code right here uh if we were doing this but let's just say if we have on hit and we just want to print something whenever a player touches it let's get rid of that parameter and we'll say print whoa sorry something has touched the part there we go and now we can say script.parent.touch colon connect on hit so if we hit play and touch this part as you can see it says the parent still because we didn't get rid of that code but it also says something has touched the part so our code is working perfectly so that is basically functions i'm gonna um show you some more events real quick so as you can see we can click this view and object browser and then we can choose whatever we want let's just say we want to see what um, what events are inside of a part we can scroll all the way down to part so we can scroll down to a part by the way these are all of the different items you can put in your roblox game there are a ton of them um, here we are part and click it and then over here it'll show the um, event down 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 here so we have Ancestry changed, attribute changed, changed child, added child removed, descendant added, descendant removed. I think you get the point, right? Um, so these are all the events that we can use. By the way, these are also different functions that we can connect to, but we're not going to get into that today. Uh, we'll get into more specific ones in the later videos. But yeah, we can check whatever we want. Maybe we want to check the humanoid and see what kind of events we can use on this. Well, we can use all these, but also some different ones like climbing, died, falling down, free falling, getting up, jumping, and other things like that. We can use a friend service. And we can see all these different things. There are so many events that you just have to kind of play around with. Um, there's, yeah, a lot that you can play with. And it'll also show you what built-in parameters it has, okay? So right here we have descendant, which is the argument. And then you can see the summary. Fired after an instance, blah, blah, blah. The, the de descendant argument, which is this right here, is the instance that is being added. So what that means is whenever you call descendant added, you can say descendant and it'll be whatever was just added to the game. So I hope that all made sense. Don't worry if it's confusing. It, it shouldn't, it's not gonna be an overnight thing like I said. But just keep practicing and you'll get better with it. I hope you enjoyed this part. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Also, thank you so much again to my first Patreon who's up on the screen right now. And if you would like your name shouted at the end of my next video, make sure to join my Patreon today. Um, that also gives you the source code directly so you can just download the files as well as Discord uh, special roles in my Discord server. By the way, link is in the description and other things like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.